Hey everybody, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. My name is Zach and thank you so much for clicking on my video. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel so that you can join my little family. I am doing a massive skincare giveaway when I reach 1,000 subscribers. So you definitely want don't want to miss out on that. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about UV index, what it means, how serious we should take it as far as protecting ourselves against UVA and UVB rays and how to prepare for the summer. As we head into summer, UV is the strongest that it ever is in most areas. The summer is when it is the hottest and that means that the sun is most prevalent. Where I'm living in Southern California, it is very common to have the UV index be a 10 out of 10 at some point every single day. A 10 out of 10 means that you are likely to burn within 10 minutes of just being outside, which is crazy. Most people think I'm not, I don't need to wear sunscreen, I'm not outside, I'm, you know, in my office, I'm going to the grocery store quickly. It does add up, walking from the parking lot to your car, bagging your groceries, whatever you're doing, you are spending more time outside than you believe. And even if you are under an umbrella or in a vehicle or inside even, you are being exposed to UV light. My rule of thumb is unless you need a flashlight to see or a light, then you need sunscreen. So if it's bright enough that you don't need to turn on a light, you need to be having sunscreen on. Uh, so right now I'm filming, it is 6.11 at night. So most people would say, I don't need sunscreen. It's six o'clock, the sun's going down. And when I check the UV index, it is a one. However, I still do have sunscreen on right now. Why? Because I like to put on sunscreen throughout the day just to make sure that I'm protected. Last time I applied sunscreen was 5.30. I usually would apply it every two to three hours. 5.30 is the last time I'm going to apply. The sun sets at eight. There's no reason to reapply, honestly. Even if you're outside, the sun is just not strong enough. Now, something that's important to know is that the UV index, which you can find easily on the internet, and if you have an Apple phone, you will go into your weather app, scroll all the way down, and it will tell you your UV index. I actually set up on my Apple Watch to have on the bottom of my screen, it shows me the UV index and the temperature. That way I can kind of know what's going on and help measure things. So right now it's 70 degrees and the UV index is a one. However, earlier today it was 80 degrees and the UV index was a 10. So when it is a 10 out of 10, it's important to try not to go outside at all. But of course, if you do need to, make sure that you apply sunscreen at least 15 minutes before going outside and then also wear sun protective clothing like a long sleeve shirt, a hat or something like that. Now, I am somebody that does love to go to the beach. My family has a pool, so I love to spend time at the pool with them. So I cannot be hypocritical and tell you to live this utopia world of of being totally eliminated from any sun exposure at all. Yes, we are exposed to the sun. It is inevitable, really, unless you live in a basement with no windows and don't leave uh, in the daytime. You know, as we head into summer, it really is so important to, to have sunscreen on. And I have some friends and some family that don't really take it that seriously. Or I have people that, that like to go out, they like to tan, they wanna lay by the pool, they wanna go to the beach, they wanna get a tan. Um, you know, I can't force people to do things. It's everybody's own life. But as long as I try and I give them the valuable information about the sun's rays, uh, hopefully that can help them make a decision. So when it is a UV index of 10 and a UV index of one, that represents the UVB rays. So UVB stands for burning rays. These are the rays that come from the sun that burn the skin, that leave you red and irritated and inflamed, and they also cause skin cancer. However, we do not have a measure of UVA rays, which are the rays that age us, damage collagen, and also can lead to skin cancers. So why don't we measure UVA. Well, here's the thing. According to this chart, and most scientists would agree upon this, that UVB and UVA do follow one another. So if, if the UV index is a 10, it's likely that the UVA is also very strong and very high. If the UV index is a three, you're not 
as threatened by UVA rays as you would be if it was a UV index of 10. There can be a UV index of zero, but you can still have some UVA rays. Not really enough to be very concerning. There are some days in the winter, especially in countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, the Northeast of the United States, some parts of Asia, Russia, the list goes on. But there's a lot of areas that get very cold in the winter and don't get a lot of sun exposure. The sun is not strong there. And the UV index, even on a sunny afternoon day is a zero. And in that case, I definitely still recommend that you do apply sunscreen. Do realize that you're not that affected. You don't need to be wearing an SPF 100 in the winter if you're in an area that doesn't get a lot of sun exposure. Now, if you're in Southern California like myself in the winter, it's still very prevalent. Uh, you, you're probably not gonna have a UV index of 10, but it's not unlikely to have it be six, seven, or even eight in the winter. And there are some winter days that it gets very hot and the sun is very strong. The UVA and the UVB rays do follow one another on this curve. So the higher the UVB, the higher the UVA, the lower the UVB, the lower the UVA. Um, also, most American sunscreens do not disclose what the UVA rating is because our sunscreen system is based on a pass or fail system, if you will. So it's either broad spectrum or it's not. To what degree? We don't know. There are some products that I saw from Sephora when I was in Sephora recently. There were sunscreens that were giving a PA rating and I thought that was really interesting. So PA in Asia is the UVA protection. Four pluses being as high as it can be, one plus as low as it can be. And I thought that was interesting that they included that. And I think that's great as far as transparency to consumers who want to know this information. However, how accurate it is, I really don't know. Since the US, the FDA, the Food Drug Administration doesn't measure that. Are they writing that based on their lab tests that maybe we can trust, maybe we can't? I'm not really sure. But another trend I have noticed is that the higher the SPF rating, usually the higher the PA rating. So if you have an SPF of 15, I've never seen it have a PA of four plus, which is as high as UVA protection can get. So with that being said, I definitely recommend people to be 50 or higher. If you're in the 40s, that's, that's okay. But I don't think 30 is enough for these areas like that I'm in that get a UV index of 10. Uh, an SPF of 30 is probably not enough on a UVA standpoint. So that's probably very confusing, especially if you don't follow skincare, you don't follow sunscreen, you don't follow different countries and how they report and advertise sunscreen. So I'm sorry. Now, as many people do head into summer, I really wanted to make this video to help understand. And there's been a lot of issues with sunscreen within the past year regarding false advertisement of SPF labeling. All sunscreens have gone through this and probably will continue to throughout the future, but they were labeled as, let's say, an SPF of 50, but they came back as not being an SPF of 50. There's been issues of benzene, which is a known carcinogenic, which means that it can cause cancer, was found in over 70 sunscreens. I did notice that a lot of the sunscreens affected were spray sunscreens, which I don't really recommend. It's hard to get an even application of the spray. I see parents spraying their kids on the beach all the time, and the spray goes way past the child and barely gets on the child's body. So that's not effective. I do appreciate you guys watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You do have a chance to win over $200 worth of stuff. So you definitely do not want to miss out on that. And with that being said, I will see you in my next video.